race number one for the Super 600s and riders making their way out onto the track and around towards the grid. We've got lady riders, we've got our top international riders back in the field this weekend with Stephen Udendahl going to be out at the front end of the field on the pole position for race number one on his R6 from Petra Racing. He's going to be followed very closely by Hayden Jonas and I know that Rob is going to be heading down to the pit lane to try and catch up with Jonas because he's no longer on the Samurai racing bike. For this one and for the next one he's going to be part and parcel of the My Way Yamaha team taking over the reins and the ride for Adolf Borsov who is unfortunately injured still from that big crash in uh, one of the warm-up sessions and practice sessions in East London Grand Prix circuit. Jesse Borsov an incredible ride out of that guy to get up onto the front row and certainly a man to watch out for. He's on the Phoenix payroll system and MTech racing Yamaha and a uh, big part on Kawasaki and he'll be pushing uh, both those front end runners to the limit. Aiden Limburg is the man I was talking about from Shop 74 and Sandra Shelley is down there waiting to see her rider come on up and take his position on the fur core construction in Shop 74 Kawasaki. Kewan Snayman, he was on the front row in East London. He's in the third row for, uh, or the second row, I beg your pardon, for uh, race number one here. And uh, interesting enough, Malcolm Radman up ahead of Blaze Baker. Baker having some small issues on the Uncle Andy's racing Suzuki. So Blaze Baker is uh, a little bit further down than what he'd like, just ahead of Byron Bester on the high-tech racing elements and Grange Workwear Armadillo Kawasaki. He, of course, is down in eighth place. So that is your th first three rows of uh, this uh, field. CJ Hackett, the last bike on those first three. CJ, of course, uh, didn't make the first two rounds, and uh, he'll be all on his own some there fighting for the elite car services uh, um, team. So Rob Portman down on the, the front row there, and I'm going to have a quick chat to, uh, first of all, pole man Stephen Udendahl, and then across to, uh, I think, to Hayden Jonas. I'm on the grid here now for race number one of the Super 600s. We've got Stephen Unendahl, fresh back from overseas commitments. You had pretty much the same kind of weather conditions down in Spain, and how's the track feeling out here? Yeah, no, the track's a bit greasy, but, uh, you know, we'll just do what we can. Uh, I didn't go out for the morning warm-up, but uh, I think we'll be fine, you know. The, the whole weekend we've been looking good, so let's see what we can do for the race. And what is the strategy for the race? Get heat in the tyres and attack, or just go full gas from the word go? Oh, I don't think I can tell you because then these oaks are going to know but <laughs> but uh, yeah just uh, take it easy a couple of laps just make sure the tyres are completely warm. Okay cool we're going to go a little bit further down the grid now here with Hayden Jonas he's made the switch onto the Maui Yamaha for today and then of course first front row start for Jesse Borsov your name we'll call him that guy so Jesse Borsov fastest in free practice two yesterday and front row of the grid you've got to be happy with that. Yeah, no, we, we've worked hard for this. Um, the free practice, too, is a bit of a lucky one. Uh, some of the guys on old tires, but uh, we've progressed throughout the day. So all the help that everybody's put in has, has got us to where we are. So thank you, everybody, and uh, it's going to be a good one. Hope I can handle it with the front boys. Right, the Pirelli tires are fitted, so it's time to go racing, get me off the grid, and Wally's going to get us underway for race number one action of Super 600s. Yes, indeed, Rob. Looking forward to it. As I was going through the, uh, the grid there, Byron Best to CJ Hackett. You've got William Friend on the second of the Uncle Andy Suzuki. So he's there in 10th place. Dino Bambino, man who was on the, po on the podium down in East London. He's in 11th place. Gareth Gaelic, a good run from him on the uh, Formula Auto 7 Stars Energy Drink Machine down in 12th. Dion Nelson on the Lacquer Racing and Hygienica Machine there in 13th. Sandra Shelley should be, of course, in 14th place, but I saw her walking around the grid, so it doesn't look like she's going to be taking up that 14th place. And I can see the 14th grid position is wide open. Kevin Redman had a big crash yesterday, had to do some uh, running around the pit lane to try and find some spares. He's done that. So a good effort there from Redman. Another man who was on the podium down at the East London Grand Prix circuit, but here at Swartkops took a little bit of strain after the big crash. Savannah Woodward, much better running from her, and also uh, a Swartkops specialist, I'd have to say, Savannah. She spends a lot of time here with the testing on the Munro Racing Team, and she'll be looking to uh, run at the front end. Luca Coccioni, he steps off the 390 and gets onto a 600, looking to do a little bit of development this year. So watch out for Coccioni fighting in the, the mid-pack battle. David Van Lingen, he's there on the ZX-6R, and right at the back, Daniel Nolan, our final rider on track. So uh, that's what it's all about in Super 600. At the back of the field, you see the ER24 car. That is, of course, our official medical team here for uh, Super GP. And we are almost good to go now 
for race number one of Super 600s. You can see just a little bit of shuffling around on the grid. A couple of little things. You can see Adolf Bosso walking back down to uh, Dino to give him a big high five. Good to see the support coming from the rider who's out. Even though he can't ride, he's here supporting all his team and his new teammate, Hayden Jonas. So uh, hugs and high fives, kisses from the Broly Babes. Get ready to rock and roll. We are nearly good to go here for race number one in the Super 600 class. And what a start to the day's racing we've had so far. Fantastic little Super Junior class. And Super Junior is doing a good effort there to be part and parcel of how things go in our development category. We then went to Bots. Bots turned out to be good at the start. Some action in the mid-pack. And right at the end of the day as well, some big action there. And almost uh, ending up in tears for two riders. But I'm sure that will be sorted out by the next time they go to fight. Front end of this field is where the battle's going to be. Udendal, Jonas, Bossov, Liebenberg, Kuhn, Snayman, Rudman. Watch out for Baker coming through. Watch out for Bester coming through as well. Those two riders are certainly going to be hungry to get to the front. They were in the mid-pack and in the top five all of yesterday. And now as we start the warm-up lap, it's visors down and race face on and start to think about what you've got to do to get onto this podium. Not only that, like I was trying to get out of Steven Udendal, the race strategy, because you've, we've seen now with Sean Jabber, you've got to get heat in those tires before you can start attacking. So it really is all about race strategy. Luca Coccioni, we saw him in the RC390 Cup. It's so great to see him out there on the Monroe back. Kawasaki machine at the back of the grid there. He'll try and fight his way through the field. Head up to some of our lady riders. Sandra Shelley, I saw her out in the grid, so I don't think she's lining no. up to race. Yeah, no, she didn't line up to race. They also saw her. She was a uh, Broly babe there to uh, Aiden Liebenberg, helping out on the fur core and shop 74 bike as uh, a Broly babe duties. Uh, great to see... Um, the, the two ladies there, of course, uh, helping out and uh, doing a little bit of uh, remembrance of our man. We just do a little yep. little uh, Shop 74 and number 74 uh, memory. So uh, a great effort there from uh, the FX team to give us a, an idea of uh, a man who's not only won in Super 600s, but also in Super GP. One of uh, very few that have won in both classes. Both so uh, and, and in fact, if I'm not mistaken, in one of two or three that I can think of that have done it in the same year in our first four think, years of I think, racing. I think he's won, he won in every category. I know he raced in, mm. he did a couple of races in bots, he did a couple of races in, on KTMs. He, run, he rode everything and he rode them very fast. So we'll be thinking of him today. Wild William Friend there, bike number 34 on the Suzuki. Great to see that he's got his bike back from teammate Blaze Baker after he's London. He knows that bike can win races. Yeah. So he's going to want to try and get further look at Byron Bester, revving that Kawasaki high-tech elements bike there. Just behind him, Great qualifying from CJ Hackett. First time in the Super 600s. Great to have him on the grid, but we are under starters orders now. Eyes down. Looking straight up at those red lights as they go on. As they go off, we go racing. And looks like we might have an issue. No, the lights go on eventually, and they go off, and it's a fantastic start, as always, from Pooch. He's got away. Udendahl has got to the front. There's no one that can beat him off the start line, that is for sure. Steven Udendahl on the Petra Racing Yamaha hits the front and pulls four or five bike lengths. It is Hayden Jonas under massive pressure there from Bossov. Bossov goes around the outside, goes to second. Bossov into second and Baker into third as we see a bit of chopping and changing in the mid-pack. Byron Vesta side by side with Dino Iotto and Iotto unfortunately losing out there. The high-tech elements, Kawasaki, already up into eighth place, making up a couple of positions and starting to make his way to the front end of this field. It's the usual contenders out front, but there we go, Hayden Jonas already trying to make the move on the inside of Jesse Bosov because he does not want Stephen Undal to get away. He would have had instructions from his team, do not let that bike number 44 get in front and pull away because he will pull away so fast. You can see Jonas sideways stuck at the top of the hill, just showing that My Way logo on the side of that bike. Byron Vesta also up on the inside there of Kewens Neyman. So trying to make a meat of all of it. There's Aiden Lehmanberg, watch out for that guy. Shop number 74, that little kid already picked up a podium last time out in East London. Loves the SWAT Corp circuit as well. No, Kieran Snowman trying to come back at Byron Best as they go into GNH Transport Corner. Looks like he might have just snuck through there. Keep an eye on the red and black bike just ahead of that uh, high-tech element. Kawasaki. Aiden Lindbergh having a big look at Blaze Baker as they go through turn one into turn two now. Hard on the brakes. Aiden Lindbergh looking for an opportunity to get on the inside. 62 versus 2 versus 82. Battle of the twos there for 4, 5 and 6th place on track. And Radman just waiting for something to go wrong there. He knows how vital it is. But look at Undal. Putting his head down, getting away. Not too far off though. Only uh, one point, uh, in fact about a second there down to Hayden Jonas. Jonas is not going to let Undal get away. That's why he's tried to break and bridge away from those other riders. 69, Bossoff unfortunately now back into the clutches of that 282 and 62 battle. And I think he might have his uh, his work cut out for him. 
which is going to watch out for Blaze Baker. Bike number two at the top of the hill. He goes up into third place. Sideways stuff forces Jesse Botsov wide. That's also allowed Aiden Liebenberg through. So Jesse Botsov from third now down to fifth. And Malcolm Radman's also looking to attack. But I was speaking to Alan, the, one of the mechanics from Suzuki. Had some brake issues on that Suzuki. It looks like they've sorted it out though. So let's see if Blaze Baker can hold his pace. Here comes Byron Vesta. He's starting to attack now on the front. Uh, four riders that have got just ahead of him. He comes on the straight, bringing along Kewan Snayman with him. Wild William Friend, not too far behind, and Dion Nelson just behind them. Back to the top five here. First two away, but uh, it's Baker that leads the pack in third place in the third place battle. Heating up Aiden Limburg, Jesse Bossoff, and Radman. Radman all over the back of Bossoff looking to squeeze through. He realizes that he might have a little bit of additional pace, but those three Kawasaki's are very evenly matched, trying to stay with that Suzuki. The fourth one just behind there, Byron Bester, not too far off the back end on the number 12, doing a great job trying to bridge that gap, but on his own, it's going to be difficult to do that. He's got away from Kieran Snayman, he's got away from William Friend, and those are the bikes that are sitting in eighth and ninth place. 7 1 1, Dion Nelson now in tenth. Looking at the front, Hayden Jonas just put the fastest lap of the race, a 3.9, so two tenths faster than Stephen Undal out front. So he's closing that gap, but still plays Baker sideways at the top of the hill. He's got Aiden Lieberberg on a Kawasaki. He's got Jesse Borsov on a Kawasaki. He's got Malcolm Ratman on a Kawasaki and Byron Messer on a Kawasaki right behind him. So really the Kawasaki riders out in full force here, but doing a great job to hold him off at the moment. Looks like Steven Undal, he's pulled the plug, climbing across the line. He's pulled out a little bit of a lead now over Jonas and it's still Blaze Baker there comfortably in third place for now, but watch out for those Kawasaki's to attack. Yeah, you know, the fight is definitely for third place. They can see Kieran Snowman. Here comes uh, William Friend. It's Dion Nelson behind them. Dino Bambino fight hard and uh, he's got uh, Kevin Redman all over the back of him so Redman starting to close in and taking a slightly wider line out of turn number one as he comes in the breaking now for turn two looking to have a go a 103.6 out of Undal as you said Robert 104 so uh, he's starting to open up the wick a little bit and uh, get away from Jonas Jonas actually falling into the clutches here of uh, Blaze Baker Baker since he's hit the front is bringing along this Kawasaki steam train there are four Kawasaki's in the caboose there and slowly but surely they're closing in on the second Yamaha yeah, soon. If Hayden Jonas doesn't play his cards right, Jay, he could be in a massive battle. Malcolm Radman right on the inside of Jesse Borsov at the top of the hill and makes the move stick. So Jesse Borsov from the front row of the grid, unfortunately, now down into sixth place there. So he's just going to have to get his composure. He was a little bit nervous before going out on the grid. I spoke to his dad. So not uh, used to being on the front row of the grid. So he's just going to have to sort himself out. We know he's got the pace to run at the front. So he's going to try and get past the likes of Malcolm Radman, Aiden Liebenberg and Blaise Baker, who are definitely closing that gap on Hayden Jonas in second place there by a tenth or so, but at the moment just not enough. That's Kewan Snayman. This is Wild William Friend on the second of the Uncle Andy Suzuki bikes. Great to have him out there and running in the top ten at the moment. And there's the first of the Uncle Andys and it's Blaze Baker with massive pressure being applied from behind from that Chop 74 and Fur Core Construction Kawasaki. Very tight between those two riders as they go through turn three. You can see now getting up into that back straight, trying to get into the slipstream ever so slightly. Doesn't quite close in there. He's not close enough to use the slipstream, but he gets good drive and the cornering of this Kawasaki, particularly that Chop 74 one, is looking very, very good. Problems at the back end by the looks of things there for Gareth Gaelic, I think that was. No, that's CJ Hacker. Oh, CJ. CJ Hacker with some problems as he crossed the line in front of us. That's a big, big pity for him because he qualified real nicely up in ninth place. So a top 10 qualification there for CJ. A welcome return to Super 600 Racing. But here is the man also making a welcome return to Super 600 Racing. It's uh, his second time out this year. He missed the second round in East London after some international duties in Spain and doesn't seem to be worrying about that at all. Now remember, he's our European World Moto2 champion. So great to have him here at Swat Corps Raceway and going up against South Africa's finest getting that R6 of his sideways. You watch Stephen Wendell go into every single turn. It is such a sight to behold to see that R6 and the, the amount of talent that that kid's got to put that bike in where he wants is really amazing. Hayden Jonas doing a good job. First time out, remember, on that My Way Yamaha now, making the switch from the Samurai Kawasaki for this round, trying to close down now there on Stephen Wendell. Our championship leader, remember, is Hayden Jonas. So second place, not a bad thing because Wendell, like you said, after missing East London and Hayden Jonas picking up good points, there is CJ Hackett. Unfortunately, out of the race in that park, so they'll try and get that fixed for race number two. But it's all about getting as many championship points as you can. Blaze Baker still doing a great job. The top of the hill runs a little bit wide. Liebenberg can't make the move. But uh, looking at it, Blaze Baker is looking like a bit of a sitting duck at the moment. The three Kawasaki riders behind him do look like they have a little bit extra pace. Yeah, they're itching to pounce as well, I can tell you, between those three as they head down into uh, GNH Transport Corner. Hard on the brakes and a uh, big move there from Liebenberg as they went to the top of the hill. He was close again coming down the hill. Now as they head into turn one, Petra Racing Yamaha, 103.5, and just class from this man. Absolutely amazing to watch him in action. 
And as he comes out there, nice, very tight shot coming out of that turn. Just shows you the kind of riding style that Udendahl's got to get that little bridge. And it's now three, almost 3.1 seconds ahead of Jonas. Jonas has to just sit in second. He doesn't have to worry about anybody else. This is a comfortable margin. Remember, Steven Udendahl's got to do all the catching, like he did last year on Adolf Borsov. Every time he came back, he had to try and make up the ground he'd lost while he was doing international duty. So it's a similar thing here for him this year as he heads to the top of the hill and in the lead of the race to the tune of 3.074 seconds. But second place has got a good, what is it, uh, five second lead over the second place man. So I think it's a, a decent enough margin for Hayden to maybe just take it easy. You'll never ever roll off completely. And you'll keep an eye on the front end in case something goes wrong there with Udendahl and gives him a chance to take another victory. Just look further down the field. Byron Besser, seventh. Kuhn's name on eighth. Wild William Friend in ninth. Dean Nelson, your final top 10. Got Kevin Redmond right on his tail. And it's quite an incredible story there from Kevin Redmond that on the way here, his van and his bike pretty got trashed and they've managed to fix that bike and get out on the racetrack. So big up to AJ Fenter for helping yeah. uh, those guys out there as well, all the way from East London. Dino Ianoza, unfortunately, last time I probably look at the Whoa. battle now. Oh, in the hip. And Malcolm Rutman shoves it on the inside, ticks Aiden Limburg off the list. And now he's right behind his good mate and Durban stable mate there. That's Blaze Baker. So Malcolm Rutman is the man on the move. Now, Rutman looking to move up there. As I mentioned, battle of the twos. 282 and 62 now. As they come comes Oh, Liebenberg comes back at him in four. Uses his track knowledge. Oh, it loses the, the front. Nearly goes down oh. in the attempt, but uh, fortunately kept it upright. Only just. Jeez. As he heads to the top of the hill now, let's see what it's like under braking now. Oh, here we go. On to braking. Radman. Oh, oh Liebenberg. Liebenberg with a big move on the inside. Gets through on Blaze Baker. And Radman had to come out of that. And because he did, Jesse Bossop was ready to pounce. What a move there from Liebenberg. Late braking, just rolled off, got off the brake, and there you can see, looks like a little bit of uh, overheating Kawasaki there for that man. CJ Hackett still on the sideline. And I think that bike, I think, is going to be asked to be moved to the side just to make sure that it's in a safe position. But the battle continues. It goes across the line down towards turn two. Yep. Radman's lost out in a big way. Byron Best is starting to close in on Radman now. And if you keep an eye on the two green Kawasaki's could possibly Here comes Baker to try and return the favour. Gets through on Bossov. Can't quite make it stick on Liebenberg. Aiden Liebenberg, what an impressive ride this evening. Uh, Blaze Baker's trying to square it up. He doesn't make the move stick. But Aiden Liebenberg, we saw him last time out in East London. We didn't even think about this kid for podiums this year, really. First year, full time in Super 600s. We thought, right, if he can pick up a good top, couple of top fives, that'll be impressive. The kid's running in podium positions week in, week out now. So great effort there from Shop 74. He'll have Anthony Shelley just pushing at the back end of that Shop 74 bike, just putting him onto that podium position for sure. Yeah, especially today. Yeah. How <laughs> <laughs> about it? Kind of a, not quite his home track, but uh, definitely a track that he's had some incredible races at in his career before we lost him so sadly. But uh, yeah, definitely, I think just on the back there, riding Pillion saying, okay, this is where you need this to break. This is how you do it. This is where you need to just roll off. This is where you need to get on the accelerator. And it seems to be working well because he's ahead of Baker. He's ahead of Bossoff. Both those riders were quicker than him in East London. Remember, Baker getting a podium. Bossoff just missing out on a podium. But Bossoff was top three and fastest yesterday. Yeah, Bossov's looking comfortable. A, a, a tough start to the race. Got beat it up a little bit by the other riders, but slowly getting to a rhythm now. And looks like he's right there challenging now the Suzuki rider just ahead of him. And you can see there Malcolm Rudman just behind them. He's trying to make a move, but uh, the man they're all trying to get ahead of is Aiden Lieberberg there on the yellow bike, bike number 62 doing an incredible job. Remember our KTM RC390 champ from last year, so he knows all about mixing it like this kind of racing because this is what we saw from those young guys last year. But Blaze Baker just shows you East London. The Suzuki could really spread its wings and open up here. It's what cops a little bit tight and twisty. The Suzuki does battle just a little bit more and he's got three very fast Kawasaki riders. He's trying to hold off. You can see how much Liebenberg pulls away at the top of the hill. That's the attribute of the Kawasaki, that mid-turn speed. He's able to let go of the brakes, carry the corner speed in the turn and get it out. Whereas you can see Blaze Baker got to hold into that brake a little bit longer and fight the bike onto the apex. Yeah, a little bit better on the brakes down here into the final turn as well as opposed to the other K uh, <laughs> headed up team, KTM I'm talking about. Yep. They get a bit squirrely down into yep. that turn. Kawasaki seemed to turn a bit better through there. We'll have a chat to Keegan Vessels, I'm sure, during the day to find out what he thought of that. And maybe even get Jade Goodside up here to say, listen, how was that for a bit of manoeuvre being pulled on you? <laughs> right, onto the breakers, down into turn two now, back onto the accelerator. Liebenberg has a big look over his shoulder. He's got about two bike lengths. That might be enough. Further back here, Cocchioni fighting with Savannah and with Daniel Nolan. Nice little uh, backpack battle here. Three Kawasaki's all fighting hard and a little triumph. In fact, throwing in. No, Honda, big pardon thrown into the back end there. So Nolan on the Honda fighting with those two Kawasaki's out of the Munro racing stable. Yeah, that's Munro battled for sure there. 
first rule of racing, beat your teammates. So Coccioni going to try and do everything he can. We saw him pull a last minute move there in the 390s. Can he do it now on his teammate in the 600? So that's a really good little battle. Savannah Woodward impressing every time she gets out on track and improving once again just behind them. We've got the likes of uh, David van der Linden and of course CJ Hackett unfortunately out of this race. Just ahead of them, Gareth Gaelic up into 13th. But he has that battle now for third. You can see Blaze Baker using his experience. He's back up in that podium finish now. He knows if he wants to be a big campaigner in this championship, he cannot finish off that podium. He's got to be on the podium every single time because uh, with uh, the likes of Hayden Jonas coming into this championship for the first time and already leading it going into this round, and the likes of uh, Bosov being out for so long and potentially Urndal having to go back and forth with international duties, consistency is what wins championships. And if he can just stay at the front end of the field, be on the podium every single time, there's a good chance that he might be able to accumulate enough points to take a championship. Malcolm Radman put it on the inside of Jesse Borsop and just gave him a little hand gesture coming out of there, saying, right, let's uh, let's fight together and try and get ahead of these two riders ahead of us. Or that's at least what I hope he said. It could have been something else. But at the top of the hill, yeah, Aiden Lieberberg once again looking to fight back. Blaze Baker, you can see so late on the brakes, can't quite hit the apex, but still managing to hold off Aiden Lieberberg for now. As they come now at the top of the hill into the right hand, and they're going to flick it left. The, one of the first left-handers on the track, so you're going to be so ginger through there. And then it's into the final turn. Look how much the Suzuki is moving compared to the three Kawasaki's around him. Blaze Baker has got to do a huge operation here. He's got to do a fight, a fighting exercise here to try and keep those Kawasaki's behind him. Well, more importantly, if you get up to the top of the hill to turn five, have a look at the way we saw some action there from Liebenberg. He went up the inside, had a look and backed out. So you know he's got that little bit extra from that manoeuvre. And, oh, Rudman having a look there as well. And actually shoving it up the inside and saying, well, I'm actually just, yeah, yeah. I was a bit <laughs> concerned about that too, uh, Aiden. Aiden had a big look behind him going, okay, Rudman is here. It's not Bosov on the Silver Dream Racer. It's Rudman on the green Kawasaki. So we got a yellow Kawasaki, a green Kawasaki, and that Silver Dream Racer style machine of uh, that guy, Jesse Bosov. So those three Kawasaki's, as I mentioned earlier, itching to pounce, really waiting for an opportunity to get through. Once again, Liebenberg pulls up on the inside. He'll just have a sniff. Bossov. Bossov has a big look and goes through. Oh, Liebenberg makes a small mistake. Bossov has to roll out of it. That might have cost him that maneuver. No, he just manages to keep out the uh, hard charge from Rudman. And Greg, remember what happened with those three riders down in East London. Remember Jesse Bossov getting it a little bit wrong and taking out Malcolm Rudman. So that's why I wonder if that hand gesture was maybe not a, a kind gesture there for Malcolm Rudman saying to Jesse Bossov, right, don't do the same thing you did down in East London. Let's uh, play the sensible. Let's be clever here because we've got to try and catch this guy, which is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Steven Undahl is out front and he's putting in consistent fast lap times, coming now through the back bar because he'll know how to do that better than anyone. And he's comfortable out front. Got four and a half seconds over Hayden Jonas. But that battle for third, the three riders are covered by 0.2 of a second. That's how close it is for third place. Yeah, there's nothing in it there, Rob. That's for sure. As they head up uh, into the closing stages now, we've got about two and a half laps to go. or In fact, just two laps to go for him as he hits to the top of the hill. It'll be one and a half into Sassel. He's up in some of the back markers there, coming up on Nolan and I think on the two Munro racing machines. So it uh, shouldn't be too much of an issue for them. Blue flags are going to be kind of waving frantically here. The three Kawasaki still on the back end of Blaze Baker Suzuki. Baker's going to have to hang on for this next lap and a half if he wants that podium. This is the fight for the podium positions. We haven't seen much of Hayden Jonas on the Marway Yamaha, but because he's been so quiet in that second place, hasn't really been affected by anybody. Coming up on uh, 119, David Van Lingen. So Van Lingen now about to be caught out by uh, the steam train of riders fighting for the final step on the podium. Oh, yeah, there's going to be some moves here. I don't think they're going to catch him going into the turn two hairpin, which will be nice. They're going to probably catch him going into the flat out turn three. As they come now into turn two, they fan out four bikes abreast. It's still Blaze Baker. Jesse Bossel goes around the outside. He doesn't make a stick on Liebenberg and Malcolm Rudman waiting to pounce. They are going to come through now and Van Lingen as they go through the flat out right-hander. They're going to go around the outside. Doesn't make it stick there. So it's going to be up on the brakes going into turn four. Look at this. Five bikes going into turn four. It looks like Malcolm Rudman's going to get caught out just a little bit by the back marker. Just a, yeah, he does. Malcolm Rudman, unfortunately, the biggest loser out there out of that back marker. Yeah, as they go to the top of the hill now, who's going to have what it takes on the brakes? Blaze Baker putting the foot up, oh, not Lieberberg. giving any opportunities, but he's not worried. Liebenberg slams up the inside. Baker comes back at him. Baker comes straight back. Oh. He ran a bit wide and looks like he's got through. Here comes the leader to the checkered flag. No worries. Yeah, for Stephen Udendahl, he'll take the checkered flag easily. We'll get back to that battle as soon as we get this man across the line. Big wheelie from the Petra Racing Yamaha. He wins out and takes the first victory in Super 600. But here they come. Up the inside it's Liebenberg. It's a drag to the line. Liebenberg's going to win it. Boss off. Oh, nearly gets taken off the circuit by the Suzuki. The two of them were so close across the line. Absolutely amazing stuff there. 
but it is Liebenberg who comes through for another podium. Whoa, Blaze Baker and the Suzuki boys are not going to be happy about that. There's going to be some work done now. Jesse Bosso behind Baker to the tune of only about, uh, say, less than a thousandth of a second between the two of them. But it's Steven Odendahl who wins out. Jonas in second and Aiden Liebenberg in third. All right, Greg, you're going to head down to catch up with those top three riders at the podium uh, ceremony position down there at the bottom of the track. So make your way there to congratulate our top three riders. Another incredible race from our Super 600s. They f never fail to disappoint. Round three action, just as good as the first two rounds. Jesse Borsov stand up wheelie down the back straight. He'll be happy to be there in the battle for the podium in fifth place, but he'll know that he wants to be on that podium position. Hasn't got one yet in the Super 600s, but he's getting ever so close to that podium position. Malcolm Rudman won't be happy. He got held up a little bit by that back marker in the final stages of that race. He'll pick up six. Byron Bester, a brilliant seventh. Kewan Snayman, eighth. William Friend in the top ten on the uh, second of the Uncle Andy's bike. That's a great performance. Iozo up into tenth place, rounding out your top ten. Dion Nelson just behind him. And Kevin Redman, Gareth Gaelic, and Savannah Woodward with Luca Coccioni picking up the final point there in fifteenth position. We're going to try and catch up now with a couple of the highlights and the racing action and replays from race number one here of the Super 600s. Let's go straight into it then. At the start, it was all about Stephen Undahl. Once again, a whole shot. Jesse Borsov up into second place from third position on the grid. Gareth Gaelic, bike number 48, all the way from Cape Town. He slotted himself into about 11th or 12th place there. The top of the hill, Blaze Baker, sideways action on the Suzuki on the inside of Jesse Borsov. That allowed Aiden Liebenberg to come through. One of many passes. Malcolm Rudman, he then put his name into the mix on the inside of Jesse Borsov at the top of the hill. It turned out to be a favorite overtaking maneuver for a lot of the riders at the top of the hill. Coming now into turn two, Hepburn. Malcolm Madman on the inside of Aiden Limburg makes it stick up into fourth position there for the Durban rider. Blaze Baker doing everything he can on the Suzuki to hold them off. Unfortunately, CJ Hackett, Bike 33, out with mechanical problems on that machine. But it was all about the battle for third place. Stephen Undahl on the Petra Racing uh, Yamaha R6, way out front and got the job done. Stand up wheelie across the line. Hayden Jonas would pick up a comfortable second place, but the battle for third literally went down to the final turn. Aiden Lehmannberg shoved it on the inside and he would pick up the third place just ahead of Blaze Baker with Jesse Bosov elbows out ahead of Malcolm Rudman. So Greg Maloney has taken the walk down there to the podium ceremony. We'll catch up with our top three riders in just a moment. Right, on the top three, let's get them up on the podium. Third place, a great ride and in fact doing a great job considering the fact that we are remembering uh, the man from Shop 74 today. Aiden Lehmannberg for Fur Course Shop 74 Kawasaki team. Just remember to take his helmet with him. There we go. Second place, swapping out from the Samurai team to the My Way Racing team, both on Yamaha's. It's here for this man, the kid from Cape Town, Hayden Jonas. He maintains his lead in this championship overall, but he's going to be pushed hard now as we see a welcome return to the full gas man, number 44 for Petra Racing. It's Pooch, Stephen Udall. All right, and handing out the trophies there is the gentleman from Bridgewater Logistics. Thanks for coming. It's Walter. He'll be handing out third place there to Aiden Liebenberg. <laughs> Kubus One will be handing out uh, number two to our uh, second place man, Aiden Jonas. And Kubus Two will be handing out number one to first place, Stephen Udendahl. There you can see some happy guys up on the podium. Let's give them one more round of applause here, ladies and gents. Your top three for Super 600s in the 20 Super GP. Let's get them down here. I'm going to ask them to come and join me here because we need line of sight for our microphone. So, Aidy, join me here, bud. Aidy. Well, we've had an incredible race there, and uh, three Kawasaki's fighting hard with that... Uh, Little Suzuki eventually getting through there, and the last time it was all about strategy and finding the right maneuver at the right time. Yeah, definitely. Um, I had to pull a crazy move in the last corner, but I made it stick. Um, so it was a good race for me, and um, I'd just like to dedicate this podium to Anthony Shelley. Um, it would have been his birthday today. Yes, indeed, and we miss him very much, but uh, never forgetting him. And uh, I've seen him pull a couple of maneuvers like you've just pulled there, so it certainly worked well for uh, being on the same team as what he used to do and uh, doing the same kind of maneuvers. Yeah, definitely. Um, he was uh, like a king of Swart Corps. It was one of his best circuits. Brilliant stuff. We'll hopefully see you a little bit higher up in the second one. Yeah, definitely. I'll try my best. Yeah. 
Good job. Well done. Let's get uh, Hayden in here. Come on in, Hayden. Kid, I can see the smile on your face. Uh, more importantly than anything else is you maintain the lead in the championship. That's what you're consolidating today. That's what you're more concerned about than anything, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Look, when I found out that Stephen was riding, I'm always happy when Stephen rides. You learn a lot from him. Um, but I just made sure at the end of the day I finished ahead of the Suzuki so we can claim valuable points in the championship. Brilliant stuff. And I'm sure uh, moving on to uh, the Maui uh, racing team with this Yamaha, it's uh, a slightly different machine. We haven't really had a chance to chat to you now, so take us through uh, a little bit of a change-up. Yeah, look, I mean, yesterday in free practice one, we did struggle a lot. We did test in the week at Red Star. Uh, we struggled a lot to set up, but uh, we made a massive change for free practice two. Actually uh, stripped the bike, basically, and uh, we made the bike work for free practice two. I felt more comfortable on the bike, and um, yeah, a big, a big thanks to Brad and Assis. Uh, all the guys are working hard. I still got Jacques with me, my dad, my family, uh, my family that lives here for the support. Just everyone, thank you very much. Not a bad body babe either, huh? So. Yeah, not, not, not bad at all. Awesome stuff. We'll see you on the next one, buddy. Good job. Come on in, ya pooch. Stevie, some international duties kept you away from East London, but uh, didn't concern you at all because you came back. You know it's going to be sort of back and forth like it was last year, but uh, it just seems to be going so well this, uh, this weekend, particularly on your Yamaha. Yeah, I know the team really did a great job. You know, we all, we all put in the effort, and, and effort equals results. So, um, no, really happy with the bike, uh, really doing well, and uh, unfortunately, Adolf wasn't here. I would have enjoyed good battle but uh no well done to all the guys really impressed with the, the podium finish so also Aiden Aiden Liedenberg did really well so and as well as Hayden Jones so full gas to everyone and yeah see you guys next one hopefully on the top of the podium again oh we'll try let's see